Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Christina McNeil, and this is MB12 for Monday, November 5th, 2012, broadcasting from the Cable 12 studios on Robinson Road. In news tonight, a young man's body discovered through an unnamed street today. What police say about the gruesome find? Prime Minister Christie responds to criticisms of a rushed and unbalanced referendum. Unions continue their fight for a terminated BTC manager, and Bahamian Olympians receive thousands of dollars worth of endorsements. We have those stories and much more coming up tonight. Your MB12 starts right now. Thanks for joining us. Homicide detectives are trying to determine how a man's body wound up in the middle of an unnamed road off Tonique Williams Darling Highway today. He was discovered this morning with multiple gunshot wounds to the upper body. This incident pushes the country's murder count for the year to 97. Fonik Tut has the details in this report. A young man believed to be in his 20s is the country's latest homicide victim. His body was found on a road near Burger King off the Tonique Williams Darling Highway. Now, residents of the area say they spotted his body from this morning, but police say they didn't get the call until before noon. Our department responded and on arrival, we discovered a male lying in the street with gunshot injuries to the upper body. At present, we cannot say what the circumstances surrounding this particular incident is. However, we want to make a general plea to members of the public who may have any information or who may have been in this particular area. Shortly before noon, you may have seen someone running from the area. You may have seen a vehicle speeding from the area. We want to ask you to please give us a call at our police department. You can contact us at 919. Press liaison officer Inspector Chrislyn Skipping says the victim is believed to be in his mid-20s to early 30s. He was bareback, wearing just short jeans and white sneakers. Though the man's body was found here in this spot, police believe he was actually shot somewhere in those bushes. As you can see, there's a trail of blood leading from where he collapsed all the way back to that track road. That's what we believe, that it may have started within the bushy area this time, but again, we're in the preliminary stages. We're not certain but um, it suggests that things may have started and that he may have ran out from that particular area. Homicide detectives spent hours searching nearby bushes in hopes of finding anything that would help them to determine who killed the man and why. Police did not release his identity. However, two people who identified themselves as relatives were seen speaking with officers as they conducted their preliminary investigations. As the murder count climbs another notch, Inspector Skippings once again urged members of the public, particularly young men, to learn to resolve their conflicts in a peaceful manner. This is our country, and all we're doing is we're losing the men of our country, the next generation. And so we all have to work together collectively to, to save our boys. We have to save our boys. And so I just want to make that appeal family members, cousins, auntie, godparents, this is the time for you to step up to the plate as well. And, and be that role model. Give that child your god, your goddaughter or your godson. Give them that time and, 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 and make yourselves available to them and talk to them. Take them out. Find out what's going on inside their little minds and try to get them on the right path. We can't just be counting numbers in terms of a person whose lives are being lost. Reporting for MB12, I'm Vonik Tude. Meanwhile, police on Exuma still looking into reports of an alleged drowning that left a 24-year-old man dead. According to police reports, the victim of Greencastle Key, Eleuthera, reportedly drowned while swimming in waters at Musha Key, Exuma, shortly after 10.30 Sunday morning. Police investigations continue. And speaking to the referendum at the swearing-in of North Abaco MP as parliamentary secretary with responsibility for that island, the Prime Minister said that the illegal numbers industry is too widespread and regulation must start with the few qualified operators before it can grow. Otherwise, regulation will be impossible. Christie said he believes that the market will eventually open up if the referendum question is approved. While Christie reiterated that his administration has no horse in this race, he said the public will be given enough information to make a determination either way in the coming weeks. Speaking to the FNM, who claimed Christie is rushing the referendum, he said the opposition should get used to the pace of decision-making that is expected of his administration. The gambling the referendum, which will be held on December 3rd, is expected to ask whether Bahamians support the legalization and regulation of web shops. Christie has promised to shut the numbers houses down if the referendum fails.
Meantime, a former Progressive Liberal Party member of Parliament has expressed concern over government's decision to limit the upcoming gambling referendum to one question on the legalization and regulation of web shops. George Smith told MB12 if the government is seeking to address the controversial issue of gambling in the Bahamas, the question of casino gambling should be included. He says it's unfair that visitors can come to the Bahamas to engage in activities that Bahamians cannot. But if we are going to to live in a society where every citizen is perceived to be equal, we cannot then say that a facility available in the Bahamas, Bahamians are excluded from participating in. I don't really believe, I don't really believe that, that many, many Bahamians would wish to go. But if they want to go, they ought to be able to go. And that is why I believe that when we are debating and if we're going to have uh, the Bahamians participate in forming a policy relevant to these times, the times in which we live, we ought to include all aspects of gambling. Prime Minister Christie stated at the outset that casino gambling would not be included, adding that it would be limited to web shops and the establishment of a national lottery. However, he revealed last week that the question of a national lottery would not be included because UK-based consultants did not feel it would be feasible in the Bahamas. Smith says he doesn't buy that claim. He insisted that Prime Minister Christie excluded those two forms of gambling because he's trying to be a peacemaker. He wanted to find, he wanted perhaps not to make the thing too controversial and, and he wanted to please please probably too many sides in this one thing. I believe at one point we have to bite the bullet, make the corrections in the constitution. I believe we have to bite the bullet and see the advantage of, of a national lottery. If we avoid some, if we annoy some portion of the population, maybe some spiritual leaders, we have to point out to the wider Bahamian community the advantage in national lottery to, to, to further advance the, the care for, the expansion of health service, uh, the cultural development, further, further the, the educational capacity in this country. While he's disappointed that casino gambling and the establishment of a national lottery will not be included, Smith says he plans to vote yes on December 3rd. While some former PLP MPs have expressed their concern about the upcoming referendum, as have members of the church community, little has been heard from the side of web shop operators and those advocating for a yes vote. While the Vote Yes Bahamas campaign recently launched its website, touting some of the reported benefits the so-called numbers industry brings to the Bahamas. According to the Vote Yes Bahamas website, more than 3,000 jobs exist in the Bahamian-owned gaming industry, representing nearly 3% of the workforce. Additionally, the website states that the industry contributes to the Bahamian economy with $14.4 million annually in National Insurance Board contributions, $12.2 million each year in utility costs, and are projected to contribute $26 million to the public treasury in taxes annually if regulated. As a result, the Vote Yes campaign claims that a no vote would destabilize the country and threaten the jobs of thousands of Bahamians employed either directly or indirectly in the Bahamian-owned gaming industry. Web shop operators are expected to hold a press conference later this week to reveal more of their campaign to the Bahamian electorate. As we indicated a short while ago, days after his appointment was announced, the new member of Parliament for North Abaco was today sworn in as Parliamentary Secretary in the office of the Prime Minister. Renato Curry was sworn in at a ceremony at Government House this afternoon. Prime Minister Perry Christie said the appointment of Curry at the office of the Prime Minister in Abaco is not only necessary, but defensible and reasoned. He says Curry's presence in Abaco brings government closer to the people of Abaco, similar to the Ministry of Grand Bahamas function for the people of Grand Bahama.